Aloha and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Got Your Six podcast. This six-question podcast brings together high performers to share their methods, strategies, and ideas delivered in an informative and, most importantly, actionable way that will help you lead yourself and those around you from the battlefield to the boardroom. Coming to you every episode, I'm your host, Tony Nash. And into the breach. Nothing mentioned on this podcast is an endorsement or opinion of the Department of Defense. I got your six, we got your back. Got your six, we got your back. Got your six, we got your back. I got your six. Sixers, today is an absolute treat. We have Major General Retired Clay Huttmacher here. Um, you probably never heard of him, and that's for a good reason. Uh, but you will, after today, know what he does and what he's all about. He's the president and CEO of the Special Operations Warrior Foundation, a non-for-profit that provides fully funded education to children of fallen special special operations personnel and Medal of Honor recipients. Sir, thank My you so pleasure. Much for Thanks for having me. Absolutely, sir. There's not many people that I've come across in my career or really in history that essentially are a joint operation all rolled in one from enlisting in the Marine Corps uh, to being a warrant officer to going to the United States, uh, the Naval Command and General Staff College and then being a two-star general in the Army. (laughs) Well, yeah, it certainly took a long time. It's not the most direct route, that's for sure. (laughs) And then if it couldn't get even more impressing, I, if I'm correct, you didn't I did not. High nope. I, uh, I dropped out of high school, uh, living in a foster home and joined the Marine Corps. So to go um, from that to then being, you know, behind a wonderful organization, providing fully funded education for fallen, ser- fallen service members, children uh, is quite the leap. How did you get there in the sense of like, how did you go? No, I, um, you know, when I was, I, I made a decision to retire. I was over 40 years in the service. Uh, I still had some runway left. Um, my boss, uh, General Tony Thomas, was a SOCOM commander. I was director of ops, J3 at SOCOM. And, he, you know, he had plans for me to move to a chief of staff job, possibly some others. Who, knew, who knows? Um, but, you know. 40, almost 41 years is a long time. So we made the decision to retire, having no idea really what, um, what was next. It just so happened, uh, you know, really a little divine intervention in my opinion is that Vice Admiral retired Joe McGuire, who was the, then the president and CEO of the Special Ops Warrior Foundation, accepted a position, uh, on the Trump administration as the director of the National Counterterrorism Center. And this position as a result of him accepting that uh, opened up. And I, I jumped on it, frankly. Um, I figured I'd be selling helicopters or doing something. I don't know what, um, but doing this um, was a really good fit. And I haven't, um, I haven't regretted it for a minute. You know, I, of course I have, you know, personal relationships with many of the families that are being supported by the foundation as from my time in the 160th and in the broader soft community. So that has an, adds an extra special meaning to me to be able to support those families. Yes, sir. And having 40, you know, 40 plus years in act, you know, in service, there's gotta be one thing that you continue to implement even after retirement. What is that? I, I think, you know, after this time in service, what I would say implement is, you know, recommitting yourself to your mission every day. Not not only, you know, what you're doing in, as a career in the soft, but to your family, um, to yourself, you know, physically maintaining shape. I'm certainly not the shape I was in a few years ago, but I do try to maintain. And, uh, and I, I think renewing that commitment every day is very important. And, and it's certainly served me and my family well and is serving me well now as the president and CEO of the Special Ops Warrior Foundation. That's interesting you say that, sir, because sometimes as a leader, it can get lonely and you, you kind of are just trying to put out all the fires that you can and you lose sight of that purpose of like making sure you're leading yourself 
not just those that you know depend on you um where do you think you kind of picked that up did it come from you know something you read along the way or is it you know it just kind of happenstance uh, you know of, like, i can't really point to anything i read um i mean i certainly read a lot of leadership books and uh you know try to continue to educate myself through an active reading program but i think where i learned it was from the from some very, very um, talented leaders that I served with. You know, General Stan McChrystal, I served with him for several years over in Iraq. Um, uh, Admiral Bill McRaven, uh, General, uh, Lieutenant General Ken Tovo, General Tony Thomas. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, Lieutenant General John Mulholland. You know, I served with all these officers that each one of them, in you know, showed me what right looks like, but in a different way. And I think collectively for Nat, I realized that, you know, to really be successful as a leader, I needed to, you know, to take care of myself and my family. You know, I used to tell my, my uh, subordinates, my troops and my leaders, hey, look, the army, the military in general is the worst kind of mistress you're ever going to have. I mean, she's going to kick you to the curb for a new or younger model, and she's going to cheat on you. What you really need to make sure you're taken care of uh, as you go through your time wearing the uniform is your family. Is there who's going to be there for you over the long run? And that's certainly been the case for me. That's super powerful because, like you said, it's, those that are closest to you know you the best. Um, and they're always a great litmus test to kind of like lean on and be like, am, am I going in the right direction? Or am I so far off course that I really kind of need to come back? And I'm sure your, your family. Oh, my wife is the, uh, the designated ego control officer in this house. I, I flew with the Air Force for, uh, for a few years from 92 to 96 as an exchange pilot. And that's where we met and uh, eventually got married. She has no problem letting air out of my tires. And frankly, you know, it's, it's benefited me greatly over the years. She used to tell me, hey, everybody at work, it's their job to tell you how great you are. Uh, it's my job to keep it real. And uh, she does that in spades. It's great to have that kind of partner, sir. And you talked about, you know, having someone that lets your, you know, air out of your tires as we constantly look to evolve and improve, we're going to, you know, become a novice at something again. Um, now that you're out and you're a CEO and no longer, you know, on active duty, is there something or a skill or ability that you've really kind of honed on uh, that you really tried as very new and novice um, going into it? Yeah, I think, you know, the military, as you know, has its own unique culture. Um, you know, a lot of civilians think that you just tell your subordinates, you order them what to do, and they're going to do it without question. Uh, I mean, I think anybody that wears a uniform knows it doesn't really work like that. Um, but it is a different, it's a different leadership dynamic out here. And it's, it's, it requires different skills, different things to pay attention to in the civilian world. And I was certainly a novice. Um, and I, while I find a lot of the intangible things, leadership, um, skills that I learned in the military have served me well. I also, in many aspects, came into this, into the nonprofit world as a novice. I didn't, I didn't understand a lot of those things. And frankly, it's just expanded my horizons and made me better overall by, you know, getting humbled, for, for lack of a better term, in, the, in a new area and having to learn, you know, after having retired as a two-star general. Um, so that's what the example I would use. Is there, a, is there like an instance recently that you can kind of talk about where you felt like very humble and you're like, after all this time, here we are? Yeah. I mean, uh, as a leader, it happened uh, daily. I mean, you know, I, I, I believe that if you're really trying as a leader, you're going to fail all the time. It's hard to put people's um, needs ahead of your own. It's hard to be selfless. I mean, it's easy to say it, but it's hard to do it, at least consistently. And I found that I, I failed on that on a regular basis. And, you know, it, it was humbling, but very beneficial as well.
Right. To be able to recognize you're like, I, I strive for this, but I still have so much more work to put in. Would you say that understanding that lesson has really benefited you, you know, in, in almost like your second act per se, like understanding that belief of rec- that belief of recognizing there's so much more to where I want to go that I have to do. And it, it's going to, there's going to be, a lot yeah, of I think, along the um, way you know, internally. that old adage adversity builds character seat certainly is true. You know, I've been in a lot of difficult situations in my life. I've been through some very tragic situations in my life, especially in my time in the special ops community where we lost people. And I saw, you know, up close and personal, um, the suffering of those families and and frankly you know that humbled me that humbled me and i think you know seeing being through those tragedies and dealing with the with that adversity um has really helped me it's it's helped me grow as a leader and as a person and certainly it's helped develop my character And then it comes full circle because you're you're continuing to give back to those that have had to go through such adversity where it's not a you know a moment mm-hmm. of time it's forever of losing a service member um, and being the CEO of Special Operations Warrior Foundation really allows you to continue to give back and help not only yourself but you know those families that are constantly having to reevaluate. Yeah, absolutely you know, right. I mean. You and I and your wife, I know you're dual military, you know, you signed up for this. We signed up for this life. Our, in most cases, our spouses did not, and certainly our children did not. They were born into it. And, you know, to ha- and to see them sacrifice so greatly um, for our nation that when they lose a parent and to see that just traumatic impact, I mean, it is really, it is really raw, you know, and what it does it just devastates uh, families. And now, you know, years later, to be able to serve these families in such an impactful and enduring way really is a blessing. You know, I mean, I, you know, I think we all join the service for different reasons. And we, um, you know, I knew I needed a swift kick in my fourth point of contact. That's why I joined. Uh, but over time, in my pers- in my case at least, why I serve and why I stayed serving um, evolved and changed. And I liked being part of something bigger than myself. I liked working on a team and serving others. And to have this opportunity to continue to serve after I take- took off the uniform has really made it for me. You know, I mean... I, it's, it's all about the mission. It's always about the mission, whether we're in uniform or not. And man, I got a heck of a mission here. So yeah, I mean, now to have to be on the, the other end of this and see these families and see these kids, many of them that I know that were very young and were lost when they lost a parent now to be successful, to graduate college and to realize their full potential and not necessarily college. It could be a technical skill, a trade skill, school. But wherever their passion takes them to be there, to help them, to mentor them over the long term and for them to, you know, to finish their education without, you know, a bunch of debt and things like that, debt free. That's really rewarding. Yeah. No, absolutely. And the number is astonishing because it well over 900 students. You currently uh, actually, it was your future. Is that correct? That was a, an old number. We we count them different. So I um, we're at about eight hundred and twenty. Well, we are exactly eight hundred and twenty one today. Children, uh, the youngest is a few months old, and you know the oldest group were college seniors. And, um, so yeah, we're at over eight hundred and twenty one kids, and sadly, we've added seventy three kids this year. Um, and we have another dozen or so pending uh, line of duty investigations. You know, our only requirement is that they, you know, that it's line of duty, yes. Um, 
determined by the service. Um, and our, you know, like I said, our youngest is a few months old. Most people think that what we do here is college scholarships, and that is certainly a big part of what we do, but not even close to everything we do. And, you know, we take the long view. You know, we're looking three ridge lines, put it military terminology. We're looking three ridge lines down on these kids because of what they've been through. We, we believe that they need that kind of support. So we start with funding preschool. Why? Because preschool dramatically increases uh, a child's chances of um, attending post-secondary education or successfully completing it. We provide unlimited tutoring um, throughout their educational journey, basically from kindergarten all the way through college. We um, fund their college visits. We fund their attendance at a college prep course that we put on here in Tampa called Epic Education Preparation Information Conference. We, we talk to the kids about what you should think about and teach and selecting a major and where you want to go to school and time management, financial management, study skills. We fund study abroad, we fund internships, and we fund wherever they go to college. We, you know, if they go to MIT or Harvard or Yale, or they go to a community college or a technical school, we don't place any limits on where they attend. It's, you know, we want them to follow their passion and achieve their full potential. And we also have, you know, we have about 40 children that um, have disabilities. And we have a special program specifically designed individually tailored to each one of those kids so we can meet their unique needs, whether it's, you know, autism or Down syndrome or, or dyslexia, whatever it is, you know, we, we, we treat each case individually. And, uh, and that, I'm super proud of that program, frankly. And we fund internships and study abroad. And then we help them make that transition to the corporate world. I mean, it really is a cradle to career approach to, uh, that we take here at the foundation. And by the way, we, re we reach out proactively. When that parent is lost within 60 days or they receive the Medal of Honor, we reach out to that family proactively. We send them a packet of information with a contact sheet. Once they fill out that basic information, they never fill out another application from us again, ever. That just in and of itself is so vital to a family. I've lost friends and uh, bro you know brothers close to me, no one in my immediate family, and then having mm -hmm. to be a casualty notification and assistance officer along the way, there, you can get burdened by the amount of paperwork that comes through and just having to go through that one document and sign it. I, I literally, sir, I have chills on my arm um, just because of that. That just takes the burden off so much um, from someone that had a burden that they did not, like you said, weren't expecting, they didn't sign up for it, and it came into their life, and they have to Yeah, and that cradle-to-career approach that we employ, you know, the results of that uh, speak for themselves. Uh, last year, we had 41 kids graduate college, or graduate high school, excuse me. 38 went straight to college, two went in the military, one took a year off. Same last year as well, our college graduation rate was 93%. Well, both of those numbers are well above the national average. And when you when you factor in that these kids have been through a very traumatic event in their life, and most of them are in single parent homes, I mean, that speaks to that long term approach that we take in the relationship that we build with each one of our families. Yeah. And then individually, like you talked about that long term approach. Um, you know, going from being on both sides, both in the military and now in the corporate space, we, we were talking before the show, of, you know, that there's failures every day. And we've mentioned it. Is there a failure or a culmination of failures that have ultimately led to a well, great success in you your know, life? Uh, I've certainly had my fair share of failures and I don't think I've seen my last one. Um, but if I had to cite anything, I would use, you know, you said cumulative. You gave me an out on cumulative and I appreciate that. Um, because that's what it's been for me. You know, I, I think I got a, you know, as a platoon leader in the 160th Special Ops Aviation Regiment, I give myself a C, C minus maybe. I learned so much, you know, I mean, I had a bunch of talented folks 
in every leadership position I've been in, I failed multiple times, but, but I tried to be honest with myself on my failure and learn from that failure and get just incrementally better. And that continues today. And so I think those series of failures, am I a successful leader? I guess so. Am I an expert leader? No, I don't. I don't, you know, I've served for some great leaders, Stan McChrystal, uh, Bill McRaven. They're very talented, certainly much more talented to me, but I, I, and I don't want to speak for them, but I, you know, I think they've got their experts. I don't know. I, I know that I'm not, that I, uh, I, I accept my leadership responsibilities with a great deal of humility and that I try to just get incrementally better every day. And that's a result of this failure. So, you know, I don't have a, a big single event, you know, um, failure that, you know, that in and of itself blossomed into a great success. But the failures that I have had, certainly in the leadership department, um, have served me well in becoming a more proficient and um, compassionate and uh, humble leader. Yes, sir. And then, like you said, that all of that calmly put together allows you to be better than yesterday. So then, sir, as we close out the podcast, and we're extremely grateful for your time. How today? I think you I'm better, than yesterday? better today uh, than I was yesterday because I'm I'm continuing my service uh, to others. You know that today we made some kids' lives that uh, a better every day, and and that makes me better every day. It certainly makes me more satisfied. Um. And that I, you know, leadership and selfless service, in my opinion, is a journey, not a destination. So I just take one more step along that journey and become slightly better as a leader and have, you know, a little bit more impact every day. And maybe one kid. There's a kid that sent us a, uh, a sign that was sitting on our conference room door. I mean, that's how I just phrase it. He says, you know, you may not be able to change the world but you can change the world for one kid. And uh, to me, that's one kid at a time. I mean, I look at it all the time and uh, it really means a lot to me. So that's why I'm better from yesterday. And I hope I get better the day after and the day after that. Sir, I couldn't think of a better way to kind of close it out. Um, As people want to, contribute to the special operations work um, our and website is special org. if they have a specific question they want to ask me uh, my email address is clay h c l a y h at special org. you know look i mean we've made a promise to these families and and the only way we're able to honor it is through this is through the generous support of others um I like most folks I know don't like asking anybody for money, um, but we can't do it without the generous support of folks out there like yourself and those that I've served with. And I'm grateful for every every bit we get, the support we get, and uh, it just helps us continue to change lives. Yes, sir. And there's also a couple uh, fundraisers coming up in tw- early. Yeah, they're all over, depending on where you're at. SWF, we have you know, right, some golf tournaments here in the Tampa area. We have a um, ultrathon in Destin, Florida. We have events in Fort Bragg, Dallas, Texas, a lot of golf tournaments. The best place to, uh, to find those, if there's something near you, is go to our website under events and we keep that up to date uh, with upcoming events. Now we're pretty much wrapping it up this year um, here, but then, you know, we start a fresh year um, very soon. We had a big event in Fort Walton Beach with the Air Force Special Ops Command folks up there last week. Um, but that's a, going to the website is the best place. And you can read a lot of testimonials on the website and all of our financial documents, everything's there actually, it's one stop shop. And we're going to make sure we link the show note, it, the website 
clearly in the show notes, sir. Thank you again for your time, sharing your leadership lesson, lessons, um, your humility, your self awareness, letting you letting us know that you know you keep people around you that keep you humble, um, as as the great ones do. Hey, my and pleasure. Thanks, thanks again for having me on, and I appreciate you your flexibility on me getting on the uh, show here. So continue the great work. I really appreciate the time. I don't know what you've been told, Sixers, but the lawyers would like us to remind you that the views, opinions, and comments expressed on the Gotcha Six podcast are solely those of the hosts or guests to include current and previous Department of Defense employees and should in no way be considered the opinions of or endorsements on behalf of the Department of Defense or any of its components, divisions, contractors, or other current and previous staff members.